Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 27 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, we discussed in detail the concept of bivariate probability distributions, both discrete and continuous. Towards the end of the last lecture, we began the discussion of two important properties of mathematical expectation that are valid in the case of bivariate distributions. Expected value of x plus y is equal to expected value of x plus the expected value of y and the other property that if x and y are independent, then expected value of x y is equal to expected value of x into expected value of y. In today's lecture, I will begin with a detailed discussion of exactly these two properties with reference to the same example that we were talking about last time. As you now see on the screen, if we have a situation where x and y are two discrete random variables with the joint probability distribution given as you see on the slide and if we are required to find expected value of x, expected value of y, expected value of x plus y and expected value of x y, then in order to find E of x and E of y, we will compute the marginal probability distributions G of x and H of y. As indicated in the last lecture, G of x will be found by summing the joint probabilities over y and H of y is found by summing the joint probabilities over x. So, as you now see on the screen, in this example, the probabilities which are denoted by g of x are 0 0.40 and 0 0.60. On the other hand, the marginal probabilities of y are 0 0.25, 0 0.50 and 0 0.25. Students, in order to compute expected value of x, our formula is sigma x into g of x and applying this formula, we obtain 0 0.80 which is the product of 2 and 0 0.40 plus 2.40 which is the product of 4 and 0 0.60. So, the expected value of x comes out to be 3.2. In a similar manner, we will find the expected value of y given by sigma y into h of y. Yani y values ko h of y ki corresponding values se multiply ki jay or in products ka sum le lije. And doing so, we obtain expected value of y equal to 3.0. Hence, as you see on the screen, expected value of x plus expected value of y comes out to be equal to 6.2. Students, what we are interested in now is to compute the expected value of x plus y. Or jaisa ke maine aapko last time bataya tha, iska formula thoda sa complicated to nahi kehna chahiye. It is an extension, a kind of an extension of the formula that you have in the univariate situation. So, the ex expected value of x plus y is given by double summation x i plus y j into f of x i y j. And um, what will we do in order to solve this expression? Dekhye, is problem me, hamare paas che cells hai in the body of the table, or hum ye karenge 
कि हर सेल में हम कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग एक्स वैल्यू और कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग वाई वैल्यू को ऐड करके उसी सेल के टॉप कॉर्नर पे लिख लेते हैं सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द फर्स्ट सम ऑफ दिस टाइप विल बी टू प्लस वन बिकॉज द फर्स्ट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इज टू एंड द फर्स्ट वैल्यू ऑफ वाई इज वन एंड दिस सम टू प्लस वन इज रिटर्न इन द टॉप कॉर्नर ऑफ द फर्स्ट सेल सिमिलरली वी राइट Two plus three, that is five. Two plus five, that is seven. Four plus one, four plus three, and four plus five in the top corners of the other cells. In other words, students, all we have to do is this: जो भी cell आप consider कर रहे हैं, उसके against जो y value आपको top पे मिल रही है, और उसके against left side पे जो x वैल्यू आपको मिल रही है आप उन्हीं दो x और y वैल्यूज को ऐड करके उसी सेल के टॉप कॉर्नर में लिख दीजिए सो इट्स एक्चुअली वेरी सिंपल एंड द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज टू मल्टीप्लाई दिस सम दैट यू हैव रिटन विद द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ दैट यू हैव इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सेल एंड दस यू विल हैव द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ एक्स आई प्लस वाई जे एंड एफ ऑफ एक्स आई वाई जे फॉर any cell ij of course ij is the general expression i means we are talking about the ith row and j means that we are talking about the jth column and so combining the two we can say that we are talking about the ijth cell i ki value 1 2 3 4 j ki value 1 2 3 4 is tarah se aap us tamam tar table jo hai usko aap handle kar sakte hain All right. Now that we have all these sums multiplied by their corresponding probabilities, students, all we have to do is to add these in order to get expected value of x plus y. So, as you now see on the screen, we obtain 0.30 plus 1.00 plus 0.70. Plus zero point seven five, plus two point one zero, plus one point three five, and the sum comes out to be six point two zero, exactly the same that we had when we added e of x to e of y. दूसरी property जो मैंने आपके साथ discuss की वो ये है कि if x and y are independent, then expected value of x y is equal to expected value of x into expected value of y to is problem mein ye dekhne ke liye ki kya x aur y waqai independent hain we will have to try to see whether or, or not this equation holds and if i look at the right hand side of this equation e of x into e of y 3.0 into 3.2 obviously i obtain 9.6. लेकिन सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि जो लेफ्ट हैंड साइड है e ऑफ एक्स वाई इज दैट ऑल्सो इक्वल टू 9.6. पॉइंट सिक्स सो वट डू वी डू स्टूडेंट्स द प्रोसीजर इज वेरी वेरी सिमिलर टू द वन दैट आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स वाई इज गिवन बाय डबल समेशन एक्स आई वाई जे इन f of x i y j so this means that in this particular situation we do not have to write the sum of the x value and the y value in the top corner of any cell rather we write the product therefore the value that we write in the top corner of the first cell is 2 into 1 and that is 2 for the second one we write 2 into 3 and that is 6 next 2 into 5 which is 10 and so on and so forth multiplying each one of these products by the corresponding probability we obtain all those products whose sum is going to give us 
the expected value of x, y. And students, when you work on it exactly the same way as I explained a short while ago for the sum, you find that the expected value of x into y also comes out to be 9.6. Hence, we can say that in this particular example, the two random variables x and y are indeed statistically independent. Students, this was the computation of the expected value of x plus y and expected value of x, y in the discrete situation. Let us now consider the continuous situation and I hope you remember that in the continuous situation the summation sign is replaced by integration. Let us do this with the help of the example that you now see on the screen. Let x and y be independent random variables with joint probability density function f of x y is equal to x into 1 plus 3 y square divided by 4 and this expression is valid for x lying between 0 and 2 and y lying between 0 and 1. We would like to compute the expected value of x, expected value of y and to verify the two properties that we have already discussed. In order to uh, find the expected value of x, we will first of all compute the marginal distribution of x and as explained last time, for this purpose, we will find the integral of our expression with respect to y and doing so, g of x comes out to be x over 2. Similarly, to find the marginal distribution of y, we integrate our expression with respect to x and doing that, the marginal distribution of y comes out to be 1 plus 3 y square divided by 2. Now, in order to find the expected value of x, the formula is integral of x into g of x with respect to x. Students, ye jo maine aapke saath abhi formula share kiya, main aapko encourage karungi ki aap iski jo similarity hai with the formula of the discrete situation, us pe gaur kijiye. In the discrete case, we had expected value of x is equal to sigma x into g of x aur ab hamare paas kya hai? Integral of x into g of x. And of course, the integral is with respect to x. So, it's a similar formula and there is no such thing that you will be confused. Ho. So, as you now see on the slide, the expected value of x in this particular example is the integral from 0 to 2 with respect to x of the expression x into x over 2, that is, x square over 2 and applying this integral and applying the limits 0 to 2, our answer comes out to be 4 by 3 or 1.33. Similarly, the expected value of y is given by the integral of y into h of y, the integration being with respect to y and applying this formula, e of y comes out to be 5 over 8. Now, the more complicated part of the example and that is to compute the expected value of x plus y. Ab phir wohi pehle wali baat ke jo discrete case mein hamari, hamara jo pattern tha, usi ko follow karenge in the continuous situation. In the discrete case we had double summation x i plus y j into f of x i y j or ab instead of double summation we have double integral. So, as you see on the screen expected value of x plus y is the double integral 
of x plus y into f of x y and applying this in this particular example and going through all the steps in a fashion similar to what I explained in the last lecture. The expected value of x plus y comes out to be 47 divided by 24. Also, we are interested in the expected value of x y and very similar to what we have just done for x plus y. In this case, we have the formula double integral of x y into f of x y. And once again, applying the method that is already known to us, the expected value of x y in this example comes out to be 5 over 6. Hence, students, we find that both the properties are being fulfilled. 4 by 3 plus 5 by 8 is equal to 47 by 24 and 4 by 3 multiplied by 5 by 8 does come out to be equal to 5 by 6. Hence, e of x plus e of y is equal to e of x plus y and because x and y in this example are independent, therefore, e of x into e of y has come out to be equal to e of x y. All right, the next concept that I am going to discuss with you students is the covariance and the correlation of bivariate probability distributions. Aapko yaad hoga ke humne correlation ka concept pehle bhi discuss kiya tha. In lecture number 15, immediately before we started the segment on probability theory, we had a lecture on regression and correlation. Aur aapko yaad hoga ke wahan pe we were dealing with sample data. Yani, hum puri population se to data collect nahi kiya tha na. We had a sample and we had measurements on two variables. For example, height and weight or marks in mathematics versus marks in statistics. Yani, do related variables. To ab hum is waqt wohi mauzu dobara discuss karne lage hain. But the difference is that now we are going to talk about the covariance and the correlation of not just a sample but an entire probability distribution. Students, yahan pe ek interesting or important point aap note kijiye. Dekhiye, jab hum kehte hain na ke we are dealing with a probability distribution, to dusre lafzo me aap ye bhi keh sakte hain ke we are dealing with the entire population. और पूरी पॉपुलेशन जो होती है उसी में से आप एक सैंपल ड्रॉ करते हैं ना तो सैंपल अगर ड्रॉ करके आप वो सारी बातें करें तो देन वी से दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिस्क्रिप्टिव स्टैटिस्टिक्स इसलिए कि वो एक सैंपल ड्रॉ किया और उसी को डिस्क्राइब कर रहे हैं लेकिन जब आप इस कांसेप्ट uh, को एक्सपेंड करते हैं टू द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन देन we are talking about probability distributions kyunki har population ki ek distribution hoti hai. All right, what is the basic concept of covariance? Students, as you now see on the screen, the covariance of two random variables x and y is a numerical measure of the extent to which their values tend to increase or decrease together. It is denoted by sigma x y and it is defined as the expected value of x minus e of x multiplied by y minus e of y. The shortcut formula is covariance of x y is equal to 
e of x y minus e of x into e of y. Students, आपको याद है ना कि जो हमने variance discuss किया था in case of uh, probability distribution, उसका shortcut formula क्या था? The expected value of x square minus the expected value of x whole square gives you the variance of the random variable x. तो आप देखिए कि उसमें और इस इसमें कितनी सिमिलरिटी है। जो मैंने वेरिएंस के लिए भी कहा, अगर मैं उसको इस तरह से कहूँ, that the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x into x minus the expected value of x into the expected value of x, और उसके बाद आप जो सेकंड x मैं कह रही हूँ, उसकी जगह पर y रख दें, तो आपको क्या मिलेगा? expected value of x into y minus expected value of x into expected value of y. Exactly the same shortcut formula that I just now conveyed to you for the covariance. बात वही है जो मैंने पहले भी आप से कही थी कि ये covariance है the extent to which two variables vary together. तो जब हम खाली x की बात कर रहे थे, उस वक्त लामोहाला हमारे पास कोई ऑप्शन नहीं था, सवाय इसके कि हम x के साथ x ही मल्टीप्लाई करते, और अगर हम खाली y की बात करें, तो हमारे पास कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है, सवाय इसके कि हम कहें कि वेरिएंस ऑफ y is equal to expected value of y square minus expected value of y whole square. यहाँ पे चूंकि हम दो वेरिएबल्स के इकट्ठे वेरी करने को मेजर करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं इसलिए आवर फॉर्मूला इज कोवेरिएंस ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई इज एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स वाई माइनस एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इनटू एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ वाई ये तो हुआ कोवेरिएंस एंड व्हाट इज द कोरिलेशन Students, if we divide the covariance by the standard deviation of x into the standard deviation of y, we obtain what is called the correlation of x and y. So, as you now see on the slide, the correlation coefficient is given by the covariance of x, y over the standard deviation of x into the standard deviation of y. Students, correlation coefficient in the case of a bivariate probability distribution is not denoted by r as we had in the case of sample data. Rather, it is denoted by the Greek letter rho. No, 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 rho ne dhone ki baat nahi ho rahi. It is a Greek letter, jisko hum rho प्रोनाउंस करते हैं और अगर आप उसे स्पेल करना चाहें इंग्लिश में तो आप स्पेल करेंगे R H O अब इसमें भी कोई परेशानी की बात नहीं शुरू दिन से तो हम देख रहे हैं कि for the sample statistic we generally use the English letter and for the population parameter we use the Greek letters for example sample mean x bar population mean mu, sample standard deviation s and population standard deviation sigma. तो इसी तरह से अगर आप sample का correlation निकालेंगे तो आप small r से denote करेंगे और अगर population के लिए या probability distribution के लिए निकालेंगे then it is denoted by rho. Alright, let us apply this to an example. Suppose that we have a discrete bivariate probability distribution in which x takes the values 0, 1, 2 and y takes the values 0, 1, 2 and 3. The probabilities are as you see on the slide and what we are interested in is to find the correlation coefficient between the random variables x and y. In order to solve this question, students, we can compute first of all 
e of x and e of y the reason being that in the formula of the correlation coefficient we will have to divide the covariance by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y the product of the two or standard deviation of x nikalne ke liye we will need to find first the expected value of x jiska square hum karte hain jab hum variance of x ya standard deviation of x ka formula apply karte hain so proceeding as before expected value of x comes out to be 1.10 expected value of y comes out to be 1.65 also we find expected value of x square by the formula sigma xi square into g of xi and the answer is 1.70 in a similar way expected value of y square which is sigma yj square into h of yj comes out to be 3.45 substituting these quantities in the formulae of variance of x and variance of y we obtain variance of x is equal to 0.49 whereas the variance of y is equal to 0.7275 अभी मैंने आपके साथ जो फार्मूला डिस्कस किया उसमें मैं पुरानी बातों को रिपीट करते हुए आपको रिमाइंड कराना चाहती हूँ कि एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स रेज टू के इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स आई रेज टू के इन टू एफ ऑफ एक्स आई यानी मैंने आपको ये बताया था कि एक्स आई की कोई भी पावर ले लें उसका जो फार्मूला है उसमें भी एक्स आई की वही पावर हो जाएगी तो बाई वेरियट सिचुएशन में वही सिचुएशन है सिर्फ इतनी बात है कि वो जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एक्स है उसको हम एफ ऑफ एक्स से डिनोट करने की बजाय जी ऑफ एक्स से डिनोट कर रहे हैं लिहाजा हमारा फार्मूला बना एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा एक्स आई स्क्वायर इन टू जी ऑफ एक्स आई और having found the variance of x and the variance of y students the next thing is to find the covariance of x and y as you now see on the slide according to the shortcut formula the covariance of xy is equal to expected value of xy minus expected value of x into expected value of y now expected value of xy is computed in exactly the same manner as we did in the example that we considered in the beginning of today's lecture and applying that procedure it comes out to be 1.90 substituting the values of e of x and e of y the covariance comes out to be 0.085 now the correlation coefficient is given by the covariance of xy over the square root of the variance of x into the variance of y and substituting all the values the correlation comes out to be 0.14 aaiye is answer ko interpret karne ki koshish karte hain aapko shayad yaad ho ke lecture number 15 mein maine aap से कहा था दैट द कोरिलेशन कोफिशेंट ऑलवेज लाइज बिटवीन माइनस वन एंड प्लस वन इफ देर इज अ पॉजिटिव कोरिलेशन बिटवीन एक्स एंड वाई देन आवर कोरिलेशन कोफिशेंट इज समवेयर बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन एंड इफ देर इज अ नेगेटिव कोरिलेशन देन आवर कोरिलेशन कोफिशेंट लाइज बिटवीन जीरो एंड माइनस वन अफकोर्स इफ एक्स एंड वाई आर एब्सोलूटली uncorrelated then the correlation coefficient comes out to be exactly equal to 0 to ab is example mein it has come out to be equal to 0.14 to aapki interpretation kya hogi saaf zahir hai ki kyunki ye positive answer hai isliye hum ye to nahi kahenge ke there is a negative correlation between these two random variables ये तो साफ जाहिर हो गया कि अगर कोई कोरिलेशन है तो वो 
पॉजिटिव या डायरेक्ट है एज एक्स इंक्रीजेज वाई ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेज लेकिन दूसरा जो बहुत अहम नुकता है वो क्या है कि द क्लोजर माई आंसर इज टू वन द स्ट्रॉगर इज द को रिलेशन बिटवीन एक्स एंड वाई और इस केस में एक्चुअली इट इज नॉट एट ऑल क्लोज टू वन आई मीन दैट इफ यू कंपेयर द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन जीरो एंड जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर दैट इज मच मच लेस दैन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर एंड वन लिहाजा हमारा आंसर जीरो के करीब है और वन से दूर है एंड हेंस आवर फाइनल इंटरप्रटेशन इज दैट देर इज अ वीक पॉजिटिव लिनियर को रिलेशन बिटवीन एक्स एंड वाई ये जो लफ्ज़ लिनियर मैंने कहा ये मैं आपको लेक्चर फिफ्टीन में पहले भी इंडिकेट कर चुकी हूँ कि ये जो को रिलेशन हम निकाल रहे हैं एक्चुअली इट इज अ मेजर of the strength of the relationship between the two variables in a linear manner yani agar hum graph ke upar plot kare to hum ye dekh rahe hote hain ke straight line ka jo pattern hai hamare jo actual data points hain wo how closely they are following that linear pattern let us now discuss the computation of the correlation coefficient in the case of a continuous bivariate probability distribution as you see on the screen suppose we have the joint probability density function x square plus xy over 3 such that x lies between 0 and 1 and y lies between 0 and 2 and suppose that we would like to find the variance of x the variance of y and the correlation of x and y in order to solve this question the first step is to find the marginal pdx g of x comes out to be 2x square plus 3 by 2x and h of y comes out to be 1 by 3 plus y over 6 next we find the expected value of x which is the integral of x into g of x integration being done with respect to x and the answer is 13 over 18 similarly the expected value of y comes out to be 10 over 9 now in order to find the variance of x we can either apply the direct formula or we apply the shortcut formula for the sake of interest let us apply the direct formula in this example and if we do so we have expected value of x minus e of x whole square equal to the integral of x minus e of x whole square multiplied by g of x and the integration is being done with respect to x now x minus e of x whole square is the same thing as x minus 13 over 18 whole square and substituting this in the formula we obtain the product of two expressions which we can solve and applying the integration the variance of x comes out to be 73 divided by 1620 students i would like to encourage you to compute the variance of x in this problem by both the shortcut formula and the direct formula and see for yourself that you get exactly the same answer you don't have to get confused by thinking that uh, the direct formula is something that is out of your hands absolutely not in fact jab aap iske upar khud work karenge to aap dekhenge ki it is quite simple similarly we can also find the variance of y and as you now see on the screen the variance of y is equal to the expected value of y minus e of y whole square and that is the integral of y minus e of y whole square multiplied by h of y the integration being done with respect to y substituting 10 over 9 instead of e of y 
we have to find the integral of y minus 10 over 9 whole square multiplied by 1 over 3 plus y over 6. So, we multiply these parts and we get a number of terms upon which we apply this integral and doing all the calculations the final answer is 26 over 81. To find the covariance of x and y by the direct formula we have to compute the expected value of x minus e of x into y minus e of y. In other words we have to find the double integral of x minus 13 over 18 into y minus 10 over 9 into the joint pdf x square plus x y over 3 and applying the integral in the same manner as we discussed earlier we find that the covariance of x and y comes out to be minus 1 over 162. The correlation coefficient is equal to the covariance divided by the standard deviation of x into the standard deviation of y. So, in this example, the correlation coefficient comes out to be minus 1 over 162 divided by the square root of the variance of x which is 73 over 1620 into the variance of y which is 26 over 81 and hence the final answer is minus 0 0.05. Students, aap ne note kiya ki is example me our answer is very close to 0, minus 0 0.05. So, what is our interpretation? We can say that there is a very weak negative linear correlation between the random variables x and y. Balki hum ye keh sakte hain ki there is almost no correlation between the two variables in this particular example. Yahan pe ek bada interesting point or important mathematical point mein aap ko convey karna chahti hoon. Or wo ye hai that if x and y are statistically independent, then their correlation will definitely come out to be 0. But the reverse of this statement is not necessarily true. Bahar hal, main aapko dobara encourage karungi ke aap correlation, covariance, or double integral, double summation in tamam tar concepts par jitni zyada practice kar sakein, karein so that you feel at home and comfortable and confident with these ideas. We have completed the discussion of the basic concepts of univariate and bivariate probability distributions both the discrete situation and the continuous situation and students after this we begin the discussion of some important univariate distributions that are encountered in practice yani aap khush honge ki hum bivariate ke baad dobara se univariate ki taraf wapis aa rahe hain the distributions that I would like to discuss with you are the discrete uniform distribution, the binomial distribution, the hypergeometric distribution and the Poisson distribution. Iske ilawa, in the continuous scenario, I would like to discuss with you the continuous uniform distribution and last but not the least, in fact, most importantly, the normal distribution. So, aye, is ne segment ka agas karte hai. We begin with the discussion of the discrete uniform distribution, and I would li like to explain it to you with the help of an example. 
Suppose that we toss a fair die and let x denote the number of dots on the uppermost face. Since the die is fair, hence each of the x values from 1 to 6 is equally likely to occur and hence the probability distribution of the random variable x is x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and for each one of these x values the probability is 1 over 6. The sum of the probabilities is 1 and none of the probabilities is negative hence we are dealing with a proper discrete probability distribution. Aapne dekha ke is particular probability distribution mein tamam probabilities identical hain. So, if we draw the line chart of this probability distribution, we have a uniform distribution as you now see on the screen. Since the height of each of the six lines is equal to 1 over 6, hence we get a horizontal impression and that is why this is known as the discrete uniform distribution. Aapko yaad hai na ke kisi bhi distribution ke liye after drawing the line chart we are interested in the center and the spread of the distribution. So, in this particular example if I wish to find the mean of this distribution students what do you suggest? Wohi purana formula sigma x into f of x, x column bhi humare paas hai f of x yani probabilities ka column bhi humare paas hai and we can find the mean very simply. Lekin what I would like to convey to you is that you do not even need to go through this formula in order to find the mean of this particular distribution. The point to be understood is that this distribution is absolutely symmetric. Agar aap iske darmiyan ek aina khada kare, you will find that the left hand side is the mirror image of the right hand side and hence the mean of the distribution lies at the exact center of the distribution. So, as you now see on the slide, the mean of this particular distribution is equal to 3.5. Once again, you might say ke 3.5 dots to nahi ho sakte, of course not. Agar aap die ko toss karenge, to either you will get 3 dots or 4 dots or 2 dots or 6 dots, 3.5 dots per toss on the average. Iska kya matlab hai? That if you toss it many, many times, then in every 10 tosses, you can expect to have a total of 35 dots. The next thing is the spread of this distribution and of course we would like to compute the variance and the standard deviation of the distribution. Iske liye to zahir hai ke hume formula apply karna hi padega and I would like to encourage you students to find the variance, the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation of this particular distribution on your own. Let us now consider another example. The lottery conducted in various countries for purposes of money making provides a good example of the discrete uniform distribution. Suppose that in a particular lottery as many as 10,000 lottery tickets are issued and the numbering of these tickets is from 0000 to 9999. Since each of these numbers is equally likely to occur, hence we have the following situation. We have a uniform distribution in which the x variable has 10,000 values starting from 0000, 0000 and going up to 9999 and because the number of values is 10,000, 
Therefore, the probability of any one of these lottery numbers is 1 over 10,000. Now, the line chart of this distribution is absolutely uniform because of the same reason that we have exactly the same probability for each lottery number because of the fact that the height of every line is equal we can see that this is a perfect example of a discrete uniform distribution students ye jo example maine abhi aapke samne pesh kiya aap jante hain na ke isme jo crucial point hai wo ye hai ke every lottery number has equal chance dekhiye na lottery ka to matlab hi yahi hai ke jitne bhi log wo ticket khareede everyone has identical chance of being selected for the prize to is hawale se aur isse pehle jo example maine present kiya of the throwing of the die aapne dekha ke har wo situation where you have various outcomes which are equally likely and you can express those outcomes in numerical form as a random variable x which takes values 0 1 2 3 or 1 2 3 4 or even values like you had in this example 0 0 0 0 up to 9999 you do get what is called a discrete uniform distribution note karne ki baat ye hai ke wo jo x ki mukhtalif values hai na they are equi spaced kyunki agar unke darmiyan distance fark hoga to kuch aap agree karte hai na ke kuch problem aa jayegi jo symmetry hai aapke line chart ki wo shayad distort hogi i would like to uh, encourage you to think about it and to work on this point on your own all right the next important very important discrete probability distribution that i am going to discuss with you is the binomial distribution students this distribution was discovered by james bernoulli around the year 1700 yani teen sadiyan guzar chuki hain and even today it is considered a very important discrete probability distribution and there are many situations in real life which can be identified with the binomial distribution let me begin its discussion with the help of an example suppose that we toss a fair coin five times and we are interested in determining the probability distribution of the random variable x where x represents the number of heads that we obtain ab is problem mein aap note kare ke number of heads is going to be a variable that will go from 0 to 5 agar aap panch dafa coin ko toss kare to various possibilities kya hai sabse pehli yahi hai na that you do not obtain even a single head or you can have one head or two heads three four or you can have five heads zahir hai ki agar aap coin ko panch dafa toss kar rahe hain to chhe head to nahi aa sakte na hence we note that in this kind of a situation our random variable x goes from 0 to 5 generally speaking from 0 to n small n where n denotes the number of trials ye jo term maine abhi istemal ki this is the technical term that we have for the binomial experiment formally speaking a binomial experiment is that experiment which satisfies the following four conditions number 1 every trial results in either a success or a failure number 2 every trial is independent of every other trial number 3 the probability of success remains constant from trial to trial and number 4 the total number of trials that is n 
is fixed in advance. Students, ye jo char properties maine aapko convey ki hain. These are essential for us to be able to apply the formula of the binomial distribution. Isliye, peshtar iske ke main formula ki baat karoon, I would like to discuss with you these points in detail one by one. Sab se pehle humne kaha ke every trial results in a success or a failure. Dekhye, success or failure yahaan par technical terms hain. Success ka yeh matlab nahi hai ke hum us cheez ki baat kar rahe hain jo ke bhoat achhi baat hai aur failure ka matlab ho ke hum us cheez ki baat kar rahe hain jo ke غلط بات ہے یا بری بات ہے یا کوئی فیلئر ہے it is a technical term and it simply means that the outcome that we are interested in is called success and the outcome that is the complement of what we want that is called failure for example suppose our experiment is that we are testing any person for any particular rare disease. Jab aap uske upar wo test conduct karenge, uska result ya negative aega aur ya positive aega. Negative result ka matlab hai that this person does not have this disease aur positive result ka matlab hai ke he does have that disease. Agar humara interest us disease ke baare mein research karne mein hai, to phir students the prevalence of the disease will be regarded as success. So, out of a sample of 10 patients, if 3 of them do have the disease and 7 of them do not, then we are saying that there are 3 successes and 7 failures in this particular example. Ye to tha pehla point. And the second point was, that every trial is independent of every other trial. Is example mein, hum isko yu samjhenge ke wo tas afraad jin ko hum ne test kiya, they are independent. Yani, aap is mein behen bhai nahi hai, agar behen bhai hote to hum kehte ke genetic, koi genetic link hai unme or something like that. Hum kehte hai that the trials are independent and the third property is that the probability of success, jise hum small p se denote karenge, this probability should remain constant from trial to trial. Ab is example mein, how do we decide that this is happening? Dekhye, is problem mein, hume relative frequency definition of probability apply karna hogi. Aur wo jo large population hai na, جس میں سے ہم نے یہ دس افراد لیے تھے اس پاپولیشن کے اندر جو پروپورشن ہے ان لوگوں کا کہ جن کو یہ ڈیزیز ہے that proportion will act as the probability of this particular disease so for example if in the large population we have this knowledge from past records that 5% of the people have this particular disease then we say that the probability of success is 0 0.05 and this probability remains constant from trial to trial. Yani, wo jo das afraad hum ne chune, un mein se har ek ke liye ye probability barabar samji jayegi. The reason being that they are independent and they have come from that same population. The last point is that the number of trials is fixed in advance. اس پرابلم میں ہم نے پہلے سے تیہ کر لیا تھا کہ ہم دس افراد کو ٹیسٹ کریں گے and so the number of trials is 10. Students, in the next lecture, I will discuss with you the binomial distribution in more detail and we will be looking at the formula of the probabilities that will be computed in any such situation where these four properties are fulfilled. In the meantime, you will be practicing the concepts of covariance, correlation and the discrete uniform distribution. Best of luck and until next time, Allah Hafiz.